Hey, Dre. Hello. Hi, uh, Melissa. How are you? Good. How are you? I'm good. So you were you went on your pod. You were real calm. You said all we have to do is win one game. We win one game. The whole tenor of the series switches. The pressure is on them. Then they do not want to face us in Game Seven. How have you been able to just basically every time you guys have been to the playoffs, you guys reach the finals. You've never lost to a Western Conference uh, opponent. Mm -hmm. How have you been able to sort of channel that confidence um, and just have such a deep belief regardless of what you guys have faced? Well, I think, um, number one, we have a coach who's one of the greatest winners in NBA history. And you lean on him in situations like this, uh, his calmness. <clears throat> everyone feels that and then it starts up top right Steph's calmness and, and, and it goes on down the line and I think for us um, you know anytime it's kind of going astray you just always lean back on what you know that works on your foundation and for us uh, it's, it's just getting back to the basics but most importantly competing at the highest level that we can compete at and um, you know we, we trust and believe in ourselves and as far as, um, you know, win one, we did that. Now, you know, going back home, they're going to give us the best shot they've given all series. And, you know, when you go home, role players play better. Everyone plays better at home. So it's going to be us to go in kind of with the same mindset that we went into game four with. Um, but when we get the opportunity again that we had in game four, close the deal. Uh, we didn't close well at all in game four. And, you know, it's it's on us to go and, and take the game. They're not going to give it to us. Uh, they're going to come out and play aggressive. They have great leaders over there and incredible winners. Their coach is a champion. Bronze a champion. AD's a champion. Uh, you know, they're, they're not going to just fold, but it's going to be on us to go in there and take it. Draymond, you came out just seeming like a little extra fiery today. You know that guys feed off that energy. Um, did you make a point to set a tone, or did you feel like that was on you to set a tone early, especially scoring? I definitely um, wanted to come out and set a tone. Jacob Rubin told me before uh, the game, like, you've played well, but I still haven't felt your presence like I know you can feel, like you, your presence should be felt. And, you know, that's coming out aggressive. Both ends of the floor, that's verbally, uh, so everyone hears you on the floor. And, you know, I, was, I I felt a little disrespected when he said it. So, you know, I knew it was on me to come out and, like you said, set the tone for our guys, come out aggressive. Season's on the line, back against the wall. You got to come out and give all that you got. And that was just my mindset coming into this game, and that'll be my mindset going into the next one. Draymond, you, you definitely had one of your better games tonight. And you've said before, before heading to L.A., you know, you got to just focus and, and stay the course. But how do you bottle this energy for you as the last two games in L.A. have not been your best? Um, I mean, just go out with the same mindset. Uh, aggressive on both sides of the floor. Um, <clears throat> attacking. You know, I think for me that was my mindset from the great to just um, from the gate uh, to just attack. Uh, whether I was shooting a three, whether it was going to the hole, uh, whether it was defensively, just attack. And um, you know, that has to be my same. It will be my same mindset going into LA. As you know, our job isn't done. We're still facing elimination, and we'll be facing elimination for the rest of this series. So, gotta have the same mindset back against the wall. You gotta come out fighting. Jeremiah, you've always said that. You're, you can always get your offense whenever, but this off, this offense that you play in suggests that you facilitate two other guys. But during this postseason, you have been a lot more aggressive in the last series and going into this series, trying to look for your shot. What have you seen in this postseason that suggests that you need to be more aggressive and shoot more? Just how teams are keying on Steph and Clay. Um, you know, they're really doing all that they can, selling out to those guys and trying to take them out of the game. And, you know, we get paid a lot of money to do this, so you can't just sit back and watch them like, oh, man, they're taking them out and just sit back and watch. You got to do something about it. And so for me, um, you know, I know it's on me to have that same aggression. And Andrew Wiggins as well. Wiggs was aggressive as hell tonight. And, you know, when they're guarding those guys the way they've been guarding them, we have to come out with that aggressiveness. And I think we did a, a really good job of it tonight. And 
have to take the show on the road. You guys would be kind of considered more anti pick and roll than you know most of the league. Um, obviously, this matchup has dictated you run a lot more of that. Um, how do you strike the balance of of when you guys need you know do kind of your traditional stuff compared to when you kind of got to go more pick and roll heavy than maybe you even like to do? Uh, I mean, we just lean on coach. Um, you know, he comes in with a game plan. Uh, his game plan has never failed us up until this point. So if he comes in. He said, hey, we're going heavy pick and roll tonight. That's what we're doing. If he comes in and say, yo, we're going back more to our regular sets, that's what we're doing, and we trust um, his adjustments. He's one of the best ever at making uh, playoff adjustments. And so uh, for us, it's all about taking what the defense gives you and what's working. And, you know, um, we found some success there, so you don't want to necessarily go away from it and just keep on using the things that we've been using un- until they're able to stop it. Draymond, um to your point about the Lakers selling out to stop Steph, I mean, the Kings did that to some extent, and he took 38 shots, scored 50 points in Game 7. Last two games, he hasn't shot that well from three, but he's got 22 assists, particularly sort of creative assists sometimes. I'm curious about his, your thoughts on the impact of his passing and how that's sort of controlled the pace of these last two games. Well, he's been uh, incredible passers forever. Um, you know, his, his shot, and the way he scores the ball is so incredible that that kind of just goes by the wayside as far as getting acknowledgement. Uh, but we know what he's capable of passing the ball, and, and um, you know, he's been finding guys. And, you know, if he gets past one defender, they're sending four. And they're not just sending a help, man. They're sending all four guys. And, you know, he's always a willing passer. He's been making the pass, and guys have been aggressive in either getting layups, getting to the rim, or, or knocking shots down. And, um, you know, he's just been controlling the, te- the, the, the pace and the tempo of the game, getting it to where he wants it. When he wants to sped up, he's speeding it up. When he wants to slow it down, he's slowing it down. And um, we're going to need him to continue to do that these next two. What did you think of Andrew tonight? He was great. Uh, super incredible, um, super aggressive on, on the offensive side. And, you know, it's what we need from him. Uh, he is, you know, Sometimes our second score, sometimes our third score, depending on the night. And we we always need that aggressiveness. I also thought his aggressiveness on the defensive side of the ball was great as well. He met force with force, put up a lot of resistance. And, you know, when two-way wigs, when he's playing like that, we're very tough to beat. Hey, Draymond, uh, seven years ago, you guys faced a similar situation heading into Oklahoma City in game six on the road. I know it's been a while, but what do, what do you recall about your mentality heading into that game, and how much can you draw from that experience going into Los Angeles? Uh, you always try to draw from those experiences. Um, you know, you look back, and I think, you know, experience in life is, you know, no matter what the situation is, we all look to that experience when, when our backs are against the wall. And, you know, just, just understanding, like, that that OKC game didn't go our way the whole game. Uh if I remember correctly, we were down like 15 points or something in the third quarter. And, um, you just got to keep fighting and knowing that this team is going to come out and give us their best punch. And you got to take that punch and respond. And if you respond, they'll punch again and you have to respond again. And, you know, if you can do that, then the game tends to flip your way. And so we'll be expecting their best. Uh, that's an incredible team led by incredible players. Um, an incredible coach. So they'll come out and they'll be aggressive. We'll come out and we have to be aggressive from the gate and, and try to get the game at the pace and tempo that we wanted at and um, try to impose our will on the game. Draymond, you were just talking about how aggressive Andrew was and kind of two-way wigs. There was a sequence in the fourth quarter where he started picking up LeBron super high. You finished with the block on Anthony Davis. Just kind of what does it tell you about when Wiggins is picking up LeBron like that and how the defense leads to the offense between you two? Uh, he doesn't. He just not backing down from the challenge. We all know, uh, you know, LeBron and and you know his playmaking ability, uh, how you know the force that he gets downhill with. Uh, But Wiggs met that challenge. And like I said, he met force with force. And, you know, um, with him picking up LeBron like that, we just know we have to build a wall behind him. And uh, Brown was able to get to the paint. I stepped up and forced a drop off and was able to get back to AD and get the dunk. But, you know, when you got a guy like that putting his body on the line, uh, giving all the energy and effort that it takes to – like, when you're guarding LeBron up there, he's bumping you. He's he's not just – like most guards would just try to dribble and get around. He's hitting you with bite. That takes a lot of energy. 
So when you got a guy like that that's expending that amount of energy, um, as a teammate, uh, you, you have to be ready to go behind him. You can't allow him to spin that energy and then just give up something easy behind the play. So for us, we were ready. Uh, once he started picking up, we built the wad, and then you know we just played and was able to make some plays. Draymond, what do you think GP2's brought this starting lineup? Athleticism. Uh, as we know, GP is athletic, uh, and, and, and obviously he's an incredible defender. Um, you know, and just his force uh, on the ball, <clears throat> call, uh, you know, his dives to the rim has been absolutely incredible. Uh, me and Luna always call GP a, little, a small five. Uh, you know, he plays way bigger than his size, and, you know, he's been incredible finishing around the rim. I think he hit a couple threes tonight. Um one three tonight, uh, but he was he was super aggressive and on both sides of the ball and it, it you know it's open to floor up some and um, you know it's made us a lot better. Hey Draymond, whenever Coach Izzo is in the building, you seem to play really well. Is that a coincidence? And what does it mean to you to have him come, you know, and be such a faithful follower of your game? Uh, I mean. That's my guy. Uh, I think you all know the love that I have for Coach Izzo. Um, <clears throat> when he takes time out of his schedule to come out here and support me, like you, you I try to play my best. And, uh, you know, I'm not crazy enough to think that, you know, we got another guy on the other side, Max Christie as well. But Max should know Coach Izzo was here because I was playing and not him. Uh, and I was just playing. <laughs> but, uh, you know, when, when he's in the building um, – just always lights a fire under me, and I'm always appreciative of him uh, taking the, the time out of his schedule. Man, he got so many things going on, fundraiser here, this thing there, recruiting here, plus coaching a team and, and running a program, family, uh, just a million things going on. And, you know, I just try to show my appreciation before his presence with my effort uh, when he does come. So I only ask because you mentioned how Clay was a big factor in how you guys dug yourselves out of the last 3-1 hole that you were in. And tonight, you mentioned earlier how they try to take Clay and Steph out of the offense. And tonight, they, they kind of succeeded when it came to Clay's shooting, but he still finished the game plus 16. So he had an impact, which Coach Kerr said that was definitely on the defensive end. But he also said that he's due for a big shooting night. Do you think that game six... <laughs> Is the night you guys need that from him? And if so, do you think there's any pressure on Clay to do that for you guys? And if not? I mean, we're champions, so there's pressure every time you step on the floor. Um, you know, you go out there, you don't win, people are ready to crush you. You know, um, people forget about the things that you've done in the past immediately. And so it's always pressure when we step on the floor. Um, I do think he's big for a shoot, uh, due for a big shoot tonight. You're talking about a guy who's one of arguably one of the greatest shooters ever um, that we've ever seen. And <clears throat> he steps up in big moments. Uh, tonight he wasn't able to get his shot going, but uh, defensively he was all over the place. And as and then his presence on the floor, like regardless if he's making or missing shots, you're going to guard him like he's making shots because if he hits one, you know the flurry can come. And so um, – you know, still the spacing that he brings on the court when he's not shooting well, um, you know, is, is a bonus and benefit for our offense. And, you know, if I, I hope they start helping off of him <laughs> since, they, since he's not shooting well because he'll get it going fast. So, uh, you know, hopefully he does have a big game on, on, on Friday. Friday. But if he doesn't, we need his effort. Um, we need his presence. And it's still on all of us to go out there and do what we got to do to get a win. Great. 